Chino. That's good. I'm supposed to make you cry. No, I embrace it. Not the other way around. I don't know. I don't know if I have any tears left. I can't be the only one that cries in your interview. <laughs> almost, almost. So why am I crying? In a word, Seattle. Well, and Gino. You see, in April, Gino Smith wrote a letter to the Twelves expressing his gratitude. In 2022, Gino took over for Russell Wilson, led the Seahawks back to the playoffs, and became an inspiration around the league. Gino balling, bro. Gino playing some ball right now. Play great, big guy. As always, keep it up. Keep doing your thing. As someone who's from Seattle, I pride myself on being a 12, even if I'm supposed to be neutral in this nice. in this profession. I'm not. Uh, my employers know that. But I know in the letter that you wrote to the 12s, you mentioned in there that this isn't the end. You know, you've been here, right? And, and this is just the start for you. Does it feel like the journey's been long for you, or has it gone by pretty quickly? I'll say uh, kind of both. It's been a mixture of both. You know, the tough part is just, you know, preparing so hard all those years and then going out there on game day and not being able to play. Um, you know, only one quarterback gets to play out there. So that was the hard part. Made it feel a little longer than it actually was. Um, but now that I'm, you know, here playing, it all feels like just one big old, you know, blur, one big old year. And, yeah. uh, you know, the great part is that I feel like I still have a lot of football left in me. After starting only five games in six years and seven consecutive one-year contracts, Gino finally earned the title of starting quarterback. You made a phone call to your mom when you know you had spoke to Pete about sort of what might change organizationally and Russ going to Denver, and you called her and you said what? Uh, it's time. In his first start against Wilson's Broncos, Gino made a statement, both during. Gino Smith, an absolutely perfect pass down the seam. And after the game. So for the folks you said had written you off maybe, what do you say to them? Yeah. They wrote me off. I ain't right back, though. That's the problem. I ain't right back. Let's go. Did you realize at the time how incredible that quote was and, and how it would stick and really sort of be the catalyst for what is now, you know, your reality? Um, I didn't realize it would be as big as it, it maybe got, but I did. In, in the moment, I kind of knew what I was saying. You know, <laughs> I've been preparing for this, so uh, I don't really have anything to say. You know, I've been working hard and just getting ready for the moment to come again, and so um, it was exactly uh, the way I wanted it to play out. Hey, let's go! Come on, let's go! Remarkable uh, illustration of believing in yourself. You know, Gino never gave up on himself. Your relationship with Pete is a very special one. What is the thing that he's taught you the most? Uh, he's given me that self-confidence. You know, he's given me uh, kind of a new lease on life. Let's go, come on. Nice and chill, have fun playing ball. I've always been a little hard on myself. I'm always like, you're not good enough, and you know, but he helped me change the way I spoke to myself a little bit. Don't panic, don't panic. Nobody panic. What he did is he allowed his voice to become the voice. In doing so, he just did everything exactly like you would hope he would do it. Gino didn't win MVP, but he did win Comeback Player of the Year, a sort of backhanded compliment. Honestly, I don't even know where the trophy is. I didn't even see the trophy. Um, and I kind of, you know, look at it, a lot of that as a slight, to be honest with you. Mm. I just know who I am as a player. And, um, you know, for a bunch of years, maybe no one else saw it, but that didn't bother me. It's not often that a guy has no injuries, nothing, and is a comeback player of the year candidate. This is just a guy who everyone forgot about. Will not be denied. Perseverance is, is the word because so many guys, when they get to that type of relegation, let's say, as a long-term backup, they're cool with it. Gino, I mean, not only is it perseverance, but it's also never getting comfortable with being the backup quarterback. When your opportunity came, you were ready. You, you, you uh, developed yourself like a starter all the time, and I love that. And How did you get here? How did you have the will to keep going when others would have or did give up on you at various times? I think just um, knowing who I am, you know, my entire life, my entire career playing football, I didn't just start in the NFL. So I think my perspective overall versus uh, the outside narrative 
uh, is a lot different than maybe what people thought and, and maybe what they think about me. And so for me, I'm just focused on being myself and uh, I'm here to be a servant leader. I'm here to uh, help people get better, help help the people around me, um, you know, reach their full potential. Hey, I need you. I need you in the second half. I need you locked in. Hey, look, whatever happened, it's on me. It ain't, on, it ain't never on you. And you gotta get the ball, so I gotta find you, all right? But I need you to give me your best in the second half, all right? Come on, come on. I never have my phone or notes in an interview, but I'm holding this phone because I want to read this. In the letter to the 12s, you said, the very last line, you said, um, I want to be an example for, look at, I'm about to cry now. Get it together, Chris, okay. <laughs> He said, I want to be an example for anyone who might have gotten knocked down from their goals, not even just in the NFL, but in life. Anyone who might be feeling like a disappointment or who might be, look at me, I can't get it together, or who might be getting pegged to someone who can't achieve certain things. Maybe they can look at me and say, Gino, he kept grinding, he kept believing in himself, and eventually he found a city that believes in him back. It's so sweet. That is sweet. You almost got me there, um, but yeah. <laughs> it's your words. I, uh, that's that's truly what what I think God put me here for, um, as a vessel, uh, just to lead, you know, people who are, you know, going through things because um, it's not it's not always easy. You know, it's not always easy. But I think if I'm someone who can help someone else have a better day, um, help someone else get over that hump. Yeah. then I feel like, you know, I'm doing my job as a human being. I've done this for 16 years and I haven't cried in, in an interview, interviewing someone. It's really special. Thank you. Your story is really special. Maybe it's because I'm from here or something, but it's, it's beautiful. Really nice. It's a beautiful story and we, we're in a beautiful place. And so I want to continue to uh, embrace it, man. I yeah. want to bring this city, you know, as far as we could take it. Yeah. Well, well the city's lucky to have you. Thank you so Very much. Very sweet. I appreciate you. Oh, I just love this city and I think it's so special.